All right, this is second grade, module six, lesson nine. And in this lesson, we're gonna be solving word problems. Uh, and we're gonna be using equal groups. We're gonna be using arrays and columns. We're kind of putting it all together. Only this time we're using word problems as our context. So let's get started. So the directions tell us to draw an array for each word problem and then write a repeated addition equation to match that array. And so we've got Melody, and Melody stacked her blocks in, col in three columns of four. So how many blocks did Melanie stack? So the important thing is three columns of four, and the question is how many blocks did Melanie stack in all? So let's start off with one column of four. So here is my blocks. One, two, three, four. So there is one column of four, but we're told she created three of those columns. So let's draw another column of four, and let's do one last column of four. And so now the question is, how many blocks did Melanie use in all? And the idea is we could create a couple of different repeated additions. If we look at each column, we have columns of four. So our repeated addition would be four plus four plus four. But if we looked at each row, our resulting row, we could see there's three going here, three going here. So um, we, we could see three and then three then three, then three. Uh, so really, if we wanted to, we could think of this as three plus three plus three plus three. So we have two repeated addition sentences that both will work. And in fact, if we solve them, we would see that this answer is 12, and we would see that this answer is 12. So the answer is, how many blocks did she use? She used 12 blocks. So parents and teachers, the important thing is the idea of you have two different repeated addition equations that would work. Now here I know the direction said to draw an array, but this question really suggests something other than an array. It says the baker made five trays of muffins. Each tray holds four. Muffins. So what we really could do is we could think of this five trays. So here's a tray, here's a tray, here's a tray, here's a tray, and here's a tray. So there's our five trays. And now the idea would be each tray holds four muffins. So we can draw a muffin and so there's a muffin right there. And we need four muffins in each tray. So if we wanted to, we could say, there's four muffins. And then we could say, and there's four muffins. So there's our eight muffins so far. And then if we wanted to, we could say, all right, we need four more muffins in each of those trays. So we could do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four muffins. And then we need another four muffins for that final tray. One, two, three, four. So we can see that there's four muffins in each tray. So the idea is we solved the prof problem, but we did not use the arrays as uh, the direction said. Now, parents and teachers, if this makes sense to your students, that's fine. Let them do it this way, because one of the beauties of math is that we can solve the same problem in a variety of different ways. The thing that is non-negotiable a little bit is we still have to write our repeated addition. So what would our repeated addition be? Well, in this case, we could kind of see 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. 
So it would look like 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. Now, if you really wanted to be a stickler and say, hey, we need arrays, <clears throat> so what we could do is we can make, whoa, we could say, well, here are four, four muffins. And and then I'm going to take, and that equals one tray. And here's another tray of muffins. And here's another tray of muffins. And here's another tray. So basically, parents and teachers, you might start off with the drawing that your students give you and then turn it into an array. You just take them, move them. And there you go, there's our array, uh, which also shows us, so you can see the 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. But we could also, if we wanted to, we could look at these columns and we would see that we have 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 as an option as well. And uh, so this kind of speaks to the idea of perhaps if your students are struggling, Give them some color tiles. Give them some pennies or two-color counter chips. Give them some sort of manipulatives to build the problem that they can then manipulate into an array and then finally draw it on paper. Again, more of the same, but this time we're being asked to draw a tape diagram. Now, if students want, they could begin with an array there's nothing wrong with starting with an array, but let's get let's read the question. It says Mary placed stickers in columns of four. That seems important. She made five columns. How many stickers did she use? <clears throat> so columns of four. So right here, columns of four. That means in one column, she's going to use four stickers. So one two, three, four. So there's our column. Now it says she made five of those columns. And so that's going to look like this. There's our five columns. I kind of used the internet to make it go fast, but you could see we have five columns. One, two, three, four, five. And how many stickers did she use? Well, we, we can make either the classic, we could do 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. That's one repeated addition that we could do. Or we could think of it, whoa, we could think of it as going across, and there's 5 going across. So it would be 5, 5, 5, and 5, which means our repeated addition would be 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. So both of these work. Whoa, gee whiz, what did I just do? Um, so both of those work. Uh, and it's up to your students to decide. Do they want to do... Um, I'm going to fix this one here because that's kind of bugging me. Uh, do they want to create, let's say, their repeated addition by looking at the columns, in which case we would have 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. Or do they want to create their repeated addition by looking at the rows, in which case we would have 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. And they both work, right? They both give us the final answer, which is 20. But the thing is, the question at the very beginning says we're supposed to draw a tape diagram, not the arrays the way we did it, right? So the idea is we can use either one of these repeated additions to create our tape diagram. So let's use this one for starters. So I see five groups. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to take my tape diagram and I'm going to break it up into five parts and I'm going to put four, 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 and four. So that's one tape diagram that we could have created. Or, if I wanted to, I could have used this repeated addition, and I can see that there's four groups. 
So I'm going to cut it up into four groups, and I want a five inside each of those four groups. So our tape diagram could be either one of these tape diagrams. In this problem, it says to draw a tape diagram and an array. Well, that's kind of what I did in the last slide. Um, but we're going we're gonna to do the same thing here, and then we, of course, have to write the repeated addition. So it says the game William bought came with three bags of marbles. So that seems like an important thing, so I'm going to underline it. Each bag had three marbles inside. How many total marbles came with the game? So this is another example where it's possible, parents and teachers, you may want to start by drawing and allowing your students to either use manipulatives or have them draw a picture of the three bags. And then you can say, well, let's draw our three marbles. So there's one, two, three marbles in that one. And then one, two, three marbles in that one. And then we could have, let's see, one, two, and three marbles in this one. So we've created our drawing, and, you, and we're recreating it. We're not actually following the directions quite yet, because the directions tell us to do a tape diagram and an array, and right now we're doing neither. And that's because we're taking a moment to let our students understand the problem in the first place. Model it using manipulatives, realia, actually maybe grab some real bags and real marbles, and, and build it. So we want to give students the time to really build that understanding before we just rush to get the answer. Now that we've modeled it, let's draw our array. So the question is, how many marbles came with the game? And we, uh, boy, at this point, the students can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they could get the answer of nine. So we know that the answer is nine. Uh, but we still need to follow, I don't know, the game of school, so to speak. We need to make a tape diagram and array. So let's start by drawing uh, our array. So I'm going to take these marbles, and I'm going to make those marbles um, into an array. I'm going to rearrange them. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do one, two, three. And then I'm going to do one, two, three. And if I want a repeated addition equation, uh, I could write... Well, that's 3 plus 3 plus 3. So our repeated addition would look like this, 3 plus 3 plus 3, and of course that's equal to 9. And then the tape diagram is going to be a tape cut into three parts. Why is it cut into three parts? Because it's we had three bags. And inside each bag... We had three marbles, and that is what our tape diagram would look like. And that wraps up second grade, module six, lesson nine, using word problems to give us practice with a whole bunch of vocabulary words. Array, tape diagrams, what else? Rows, columns. Repeated addition, it's uh, somewhere we had up there. Repeated addition, I mean, just tons of stuff. And by the way, this is a great opportunity, parents and teachers. Create a word wall, an academic word, word wall to help your students connect all of these words to actual meaningful um, experiences.